Christmas Eve in the year is 1835. Jacob Marley has died and his grumpy partner in business, Ebenezer Scrooge, is at his funeral. Tuppence is tuppence, boy. This money won't be any use to him now. B -b pay please. Fine. It's Christmas Eve and seven years have passed. Scrooge is greedier than ever. His worker, Bob Cratchit, is a very jolly man. Merry Christmas, Uncle! Christmas? Bah humbug. Can you come to Christmas dinner? Please, Uncle. No! Now leave or else. Sir, can I have Christmas Day off? All right, but you have to be in early on Boxing Day or you're fired. Wee Wee! Yay! <laughs> A day off for Christmas, humbug. God bless you, merry gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Scrooge. Humbug! As Scrooge reached to turn the doorknob to get into his house, the door knocker seemed to come alive. A face slowly emerged in the carvings of the old knocker. A face Scrooge recognised, the face of Jacob Marley. Ah! As Scrooge lifted his head, he saw the door knocker was the usual wooden carved shape that it had always been. My eyes must be playing tricks on me. I shall go and get them tested first thing tomorrow. Scrooge cautiously opened the door and stepped inside, suddenly very aware of the darkness and shadows that surrounded him. A few minutes later, Scrooge was sitting by the fire, warming some soup, when all the bells in the house started to ring, getting louder and louder by the second. Suddenly, heavy boxes flew through the door, clanking with chains. Along with came an eerie pale figure floating above the floor. Ah! Hello there, old friend. Jacob Marley, my old business partner? Why, it can't be you, for you are dead as a doornail. Why do you doubt your senses? I doubt them because the slightest thing can affect them. Stop being such a misery. I was like you in life and it resulted in these. I made these chains myself, link by link, yard by yard. Three spirits will visit you to help you change your future. The first will arrive when the bell tolls one. Scrooge shuddered, looked at the clock and climbed into bed, truly shaken by the appearance of his old business partner. As the clock chimes midnight, the first spirit appears, lighting up the room. Scrooge is absolutely petrified. Are you the first ghost Marley warned me about? Oh yes, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Your past, Scrooge. Follow me. The ghost teleports Scrooge back to his old school, which is empty except for one lonely boy. Do you remember this place? I remember it like it was yesterday. Poor boy, winning. Fan Scrooge's sister rushes in, gushing with excitement. Oh brother Ebenezer, I bring good news. Father said you can come home with us for Christmas. Oh, fam, that is delightful. It's a wonderful early Christmas present. The ghost then takes Scrooge back to see himself working at Fezziwig's warehouse as a young apprentice. I remember this place. It's where I used to work. Fezziwig is getting everything ready for the company's Christmas party. There'll be dancing and merriment for all. Fezziwig was such a kind soul. He used to make a Christmas special where everyone worked for him. The party is now in full swing and the young Scrooge bumps into Belle, a young girl who works with him. Oh, excuse me, Belle. Merry Christmas. Shall we dance? Oh, I thought you never asked. And so a loving relationship blossomed, and years later they were engaged to be married. However, things were not always rosy, and Scrooge became obsessed with making money, and one day Belle could take it money. I can't marry you, Ebenezer. You care more about money than me. But I do be- Why do you enjoy torturing me, spirit? I can't take it anymore. These things in the past that pain you so are of your own making, Scrooge. Away, damn spirit! Scrooge sat on his bed and saw a ghostly light coming from under the door. Come in and know me better, man. <gasps> Hold my roll when we shall fly. Suddenly they had magically materialised to a small house in a poor part of town. It was Bob Cratchit's house. A toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of this feast. The founder of the feast indeed. He pays you so little, Bob. I can't even afford a doctor for poor little Timmy. If he was here, I'd give him something to feast upon. My darling, it's Christmas Day. God bless us, everyone. Spirit, tell me, will Tiny Tim die? I see an empty chair and a lonely crutch. Next, they zoomed away again, but this time they arrived at Nephew Fred's house where the Christmas guests were playing the yes or no game. Is it an animal? Yes. A dog? A pig? A cow? A horse? An ass? Yes and no. <laughs> I know, it's your Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Then the ghost made Scrooge visit people all over the world celebrating Christmas in every place imaginable so we could see what he missed out on on every Christmas day. Finally, they arrived in a dark, ominous clock tower with a spine-chilling graveyard. Like 842 of my brothers before me, my time is at an end. <laughs> Alone in the clock tower, a mysterious shadow appeared in front of Scrooge, terrifying him to his core. 
Although I fear you, spirits, I know you're here to do me good. Lead on. I heard he died last night. I wonder who he left his money to. Not me, that's all I know. Anyway, it's gonna be cheap, you know. I'll go. If lunch is provided. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. Show me some emotion connected with this death. The spirit takes Scrooge to the house of a family who owe him money. Great news! The old miser is going to kick us out for late payment is dead. We won't be homeless this Christmas. Hurrah! How can they be happy at this poor fellow's death? Show me some tenderness connected with a death. The spirit takes Scrooge to Tiny Tim's house. Bob, you seem to walk home slow these days. I visited Tiny Tim's grave on the way home. It was so peaceful it would have done you good to see it. Spirit, are these the shadows of what might be or what will be? Must Tim die? The phantom took Scrooge back to the graveyard and pointed to a solitary gravestone covered in moss and snow. Scrooge was horrified to read the name on the stone. It was Ebenezer Scrooge. No, Spirit! I'm not the man I once was. Let me sponge away the words on that stone. Scrooge grabbed hold of the spirit's robe sobbing, but then found himself back in his bedroom. Yippee, I'm still alive. A new beginning. I am a changed man and I'll honor Christmas in my heart and keep it all year round. You, boy, what day is it, my fine fellow? Why, it's Christmas Day, sir. Of course it is. Go to the poulterer and buy the biggest turkey in the shop. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Then deliver it to Bob Cratchit's house. A shilling for your troubles. As the boy ran to the shop, Scrooge got dressed and walked through the snowy London streets, wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. Suddenly he bounced into the charity collectors, the ones he had been so dreadfully rude to the previous day. I wholeheartedly apologise, fine sir, for my ghastly behaviour yesterday. I would like to make up for my misdemeanour by giving you 50 whole pounds. Goodness gracious, such a generous gesture, Mr Scrooge. Scrooge walked on and generously gave another donation, this time to a group of cow sellers. He then made his way to his nephew Fred's house to take up his invitation to dinner. Why, Uncle, what a pleasant surprise. I didn't expect you to come. You're just in time for dinner. And Scrooge's generosity didn't end there, but he couldn't resist playing a joke first on Bob Cratchit when his hard-working employee walked into the office. You're late, Cratchit. Uh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Scrooge. I, I, I. You've gone too far this time, Cratchit. I'm going to... Please don't sack me, sir. I beg of you. I have a family to care for. I'm going to... Raise your salary and pay off your mortgage and make sure Tiny Tim receives all the medical help he needs. And Scrooge was true to his work, keeping the Christmas spirit all year round and enriching the lives of others. And as Tiny Tim said, God bless us everyone! <laughs>